Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Almighty God for giving us another opportunity to be able to meet this evening. Uh, we thank Him for all that He has been doing for us in the year. And it's our prayer that He will continue to uphold us all and keep us all um, in this path of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, by the grace of God, we want to um, look at another interesting topic. Our topic of discussion today is Philippians 4, more than just a Bible chapter. Philippians 4, more than just a Bible chapter. And our text are taken from the book of Psalms 119, verse 11. And of course, Philippians chapter 4, verse 1 to 23. Psalm 119, verse 11. And Philippians chapter 4, verse 1 to 23. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we appreciate you for the grace you've given us to be among the living. Thank you for sparing our lives. Thanks for all that you have been doing, for upholding us, for keeping us. We give a praise, we exalt you. We are adored in Jesus' name. Thank you for the opportunity to be among the living. Thank you for your message that you have been showing us. We are grateful. We are adored in Jesus' name. As we go into your word, our Lord God, we pray you open our eyes to be able to enjoy the full benefits of this chapter in the name of Jesus. The grace to even adhere to the instructions and provided in this chapter. We pray you grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you have answered. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And so, um, like I mentioned, um, our topic of this today is Philippians chapter 4, more than just a Bible chapter. Um, brothers and sisters, it is important for us to know that as Christians, for us to uh, be able to keep our faith, for us to be able to thrive um, in this Christian journey, for us to um, be all that God wants us to be. It is important for us to know the scriptures. In fact, personally, I believe that uh, the more scriptures we know, um, the more we are able uh, to keep ourselves you know, in this Christian path. And that is why Psalm 119 verse 11 says that uh, the, the psalmist that are talking about David himself, he said in the book of Psalm 119 verse 11, he said, Thy word have I in my heart that I may not sin against thee. In other words, if he um, of course, if he does not know the word of God, then that means that he will sin against God. Brothers and sisters, it is important for you and I to know that it is the word of God, the level of the word of God that we know that can keep us from sin. If we don't know the mind of God concerning some matters, then definitely we will end up committing sin against him in those areas. That is why it is important for you and I and to have a good of the word of God. It's not just for us to read the word of God, but for us to be able to meditate on them and then apply them to our life appropriately so that we will not sin against God. As I pray that the good Lord will help you and I unto that perfect day in Jesus' name. As about today, our focus is on one of the chapters in the book of Philippians. But before we go into that, it's better for us to know that the Bible itself has 69 books. Uh, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we have 69 books, meaning that we have um, from our Genesis, we have Exodus, we have Leviticus, and of course we then have our Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible. And then in this book, the Bible itself, we then have 1,189 chapters in the Bible, meaning that we have more than a thousand chapters in the Bible. So meaning that we have um, chapters in different books that make up the entire Bible. And the book of Philippians chapter 4 is just one of these chapters. Of course, we can have, we have that in the book of Philippians in the New Testament. And this, like I said to us earlier, that the, the message of today is focused on this chapter, that's Philippians chapter 4, because this chapter has a lot of um, wonderful verses that we and I can actually learn from. In fact, some of our Christian principles are based on what we have in this chapter. And so today, by the grace of God, we want to uh, look at some extracts from this, um, from, the verses, from the verses of this chapter for us to you know, apply them to our lives, to remember them, and to use them as we grow in this Christian faith. And so I pray that the good Lord will keep you and I unto that perfect day, even as we meditate on these verses in Jesus' name. It's better for us to also emphasize that we call them extracts because um, they are not um, for some of these um, verses, we didn't take and we didn't focus on all that we have in the verse. All that we did was just to you know, pick some important 
um, quotes from these verses so that we can remember them and then apply them to our lives. I pray that the good Lord will help you and, uh, and to be able to use uh, this excerpt appropriately in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, um, we have um, like 14 of them, but then we have the first one from, um, from verse 1. It encourages you and I to stand fast in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, it is important that you and I will stand fast. To stand fast means to be steadfast, to be faithful. I pray, I pray that good Lord will help you and I to be faithful in Him, in Jesus' name. And from verse 2, He encourages, verse two encourages us um, to have the same mind in the Lord. You know, of course, in the Christian fold, we are, we, uh, we are from different backgrounds. We have the men, we have the women, we have our children, we have our teenagers, we have our youth, and we have the old, we have the young. We have people from different backgrounds. But then this verse too, we can see here that it encourages you and I to have the same mind in the Lord. Assuming that we must be united, we must be people of one vision, we must be people of one mind. And I pray God will help us to uh, stay united in the name of Jesus. In verse 3 it says, help those women who labored with me because Apostle Paul here you know, was, you know, was given this instruction that they should help those women uh, who actually labored with him in the gospel. Brothers and sisters, it's important for you and I to help women that have been of help in ministry. You know, that uh, women that are, are, are faithful you know, in the service of the Lord, women that have devoted themselves into God's service, it's important for you and I to also support them, to help them, just like Apostle Paul instructed in this verse. And verse 4, I will encourage you just here to rejoice in the Lord always. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what you are going through, but here this is um, the advice for you. Please rejoice in the Lord. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. It is when we have the joy of God that we can then say that we have uh, the strength that we need uh, to move on. It is then we can say that we have the strength to overcome our challenges. What the devil does not want is that he does not want to have also have that joy because he knows that when we are weak, when we are depressed, when we are frustrated, then he's, he's in control. But then when we have the joy of the Lord, when we have his strength, when we know that God is for us, when we know that with God we can do all things, when we know that God is on our side, of course we are going to rejoice and with that we'll be able to overcome our challenges. So brothers and sisters, let's be encouraged by what we have in this verse, which is that you and I should rejoice in the Lord and not just to rejoice in the Lord. But we should do that always. Says, rejoice in the Lord always. So please let's do that. And the good Lord will help us in Jesus' name. In verse 5, it says, Let your moderation be known to all men. Verse says, We are encouraged here to ensure that our moderation is known to all. That we are moderate in all that we do. Um, we, we exercise moderation in the way we speak, in the way we dress, in the way we address issues. In the way we spend our money, in the way we manage our time, in the way we comport ourselves, in the way we relate to society. Let moderation be our watchword. And I pray God will help us to um, do this effectively in the name of Jesus. And in verse 6 it says, Be anxious for nothing. You know, many of us, you know, the demands of um, our daily lives you know, sometimes may make us to uh, be anxious, to be afraid, to be worried. And per year we have the Philippians chapter 4, verse. Say, saying that we should be anxious for nothing. And instead, he gave us what to do, he said, and we should, in prayer and thanksgiving, we should make our request known unto God. And the peace of God, that the past more understand what people are. So, brothers and sisters, the key word there is that please be anxious for nothing. Be not, do not allow anything to um, give, uh, make you worry. Please rest in that love of God. Rest in the peace of God that is beyond my understanding. Let your request be made unto him. And of course, he will grant you his peace. And he will grant even me myself, even myself uh, his peace in Jesus. In verse 8 it says, verse 8 of, um, in verse 8 of this chapter, Philippians chapter 4, he says, whatsoever things that are true, whatsoever things that are honest, whatsoever things that are just, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things that have godly report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So the verse 8 of this chapter, you know, give us an idea of what uh, our thoughts should be on. Our thoughts should be on things that are true, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that have good, godly reports. So brothers and sisters, a good report, godly report, and brothers and sisters, it's important for you and I to ensure that we guard our thoughts. Our thoughts should just be on those things 
that are explained in this verse things that are true things that are honest things that you know when you know even if our hearts becomes open to the public when they see what we have in our hearts they can be say truly we are children of god so this verse here you know explains to us what our thoughts should uh, focus on i pray god will give us the grace to focus on all of these things in jesus name and of course when we have our thoughts that are the railing god will give us the grace to be able to refocus our thoughts on things that are pure on things that are defined and to the body of christ in jesus name amen so and we have um the that last seven uh, excerpts we have the next one from verse nine it says here yeah, it says that those things which you have both learned and received and had and seen in me do brothers and sisters um there, there's a difference between hearing something or seeing something and then of course doing according to what we have seen it's not just for us to go to church and to say that we are christians or to say that we read the scriptures it is important for us to understand the place of doing and that is why this verse here is saying that from those things that we have learned you have received you have had and you have seen in me please do brothers and sisters let's do according to all that christ has taught us in the scriptures according to all that we have learned in church let's do according to uh, all that we know that god wants us to do and the good lord will bless us as we begin to do not just to speak in the name of jesus verse 11 here says for i have learned in whatsoever state i have there will to be content here yeah, it talks about contentment you know in fact that will make us understand that contentment is a great being contented is a great thing contentment is indeed a great gain brothers and sisters yeah, God wants us to be contented with whatever He has given us. I don't know, and that thing that you are worried on, or that thing that is giving you concern, God wants you to be contented. He says, For I've learned in whatsoever state I am, you have to be content. Uh, maybe in terms of the job that you do, the family you have, the family background, the house you live, the car you drive, and the number of clothes you have, the kind of friends you have, whatever you think. Uh, maybe the kind of your parents your children number of children anything that you, in the state uh, in the state that you are in currently the bible encourages us in this verse to just be contented so brothers and sisters let contentment be our watchword let us be contented because when we are not contented will not be will not give god you know, the, the praise that is that is due to him will not respect him will not appreciate what he has done so let's be contented with what he has given us and from there he can then add more to our silver we desire for him i pray he will continue to help you and i and in this aspect in the name of jesus and then we have um, verse 13 which is a very popular one flip it chapter 4 verse 13 it says i can do all things to christ who strengthens me i can do all things through christ who strengthens me brothers and sisters you and i we can do all things through christ who strengthens us so meaning that you now without christ we are nothing so and that is the truth without christ there is nothing we can do uh, our effectiveness our, our, our goals our, our, our career and all of those things that we desire will only come when christ becomes our strength so this is when christ is on our side is when we know that our strength of strength is from christ then that we are fit to say that we can do anything brothers and sisters it is important for you and i to know that we should not allow the challenges of life to discourage us we should not allow things that come our way and to weigh us down because when we have christ in us we can definitely do all things i pray that good lord will give us the strength to remember this verse and to apply and these verses or the essence of this verse appropriately in our lives in the name of jesus verse 19 says but my god shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by christ jesus say my god shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by christ jesus for us and sisters God is the one that supplies people's needs. God is the one that is a great provision, is a great provider. It's our Jehovah Jerry. And the, the verse, chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 9, is also a very popular verse. Uh, but it's better for us to remember that God Himself is the one that will supply all our needs. And of course, the level to which He will supply them, He says, according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So that means that um, to that extent to which and uh, we can you know we can quantify the regions of our, 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 of the glory of our christ jesus as the sense to which god himself can supply our needs and of course we all know that god can you know that can lift a man even beyond 
his father's dream. So that's why you and I need to remember that our God is more than able to supply all our needs. So no matter what you are passing through, no matter your desires, no matter the challenges, no matter the needs that you have, please remember that the God that we serve shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And in verse 20, he says, Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. So meaning that, brothers and sisters, all glory should always be given to God. So no matter what you have achieved, no matter your attainment, no matter um, the feat you have achieved, all glory must always be unto God and our Father and forever. Amen. And in verse 21, it says, Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. It's important for us to know that every sin that we have in Christ Jesus, let's salute them, let's encourage them, let's greet them, let's salute them. And it is well with us in Jesus. And finally, we have verse 22. It says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, we want to pray that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, will be with us all in the name of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace, the grace, the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to do all things, to overcome our challenges, to be all that He wants us to be, shall be with us all. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, in conclusion, it's important for us to know that this verse, like this chapter, like I said, is a very um, interesting chapter. It's a very important chapter. So, please, it's not just for us to read it. Let's take our time to, to meditate on the on the verses. Let's take our time to apply the instructions um, in these verses and also to adhere to the advice uh, that will be given here by Apostle Paul. And as we do all of this, the Lord himself will bless us mightily. In the name of Jesus. So far as you are listening to us at this time and you have not been allowed to Lord Jesus, I want to say that Jesus loves you, He cares about you, and He wants you to also be a partaker of all of these things that we enjoy in Christ Jesus. So that's why I want to encourage you to please use this opportunity to give your life to Lord Jesus because tomorrow might just be too late and Jesus is coming soon. No, nobody knows when He's going to come, but all that we are sure of is the fact that He is going to come. And so if you want to give your life to Jesus at this time, can you just please keep it after me? Just Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you because you reign in the affairs of me. I pray that I'll be sinner. Please forgive me my sins. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will help me. I pray that you keep me. I pray that, Lord God, I'm, I'm sorry for all my sins. Please wash me with your blood. Um, today, write my name in the book of life. Today, fill my heart and give me the grace to live a righteous life. Thank you because you have answered. I pray, O oh God, that you, O oh God, you give me that grace to live a life that honors you, a life that glorifies you, and a life that um, also will win more so for you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for answering my prayers. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, in the Lord, if I said that prayer with us, we want to congratulate you. Uh, for making the best decision anybody can ever make. I want to assure you that your name is written in the book of life. But please and please, we want to encourage you to please stay connected with the Lord Jesus. Because nobody can you know, go through this life successfully. Nobody can make it to heaven without Christ helping him or helping him or her. So I want to encourage you, please ensure that you have Jesus in your boat. Follow him daily and he will help you in Jesus' name. So as we close today, we also want to encourage you and to be a man and woman of prayer because prayer itself is the way of us communicating with our Father. We also want to encourage you to please take your time to read the scriptures and because like we said earlier, that this is when we know the word of God that we can align ourselves to those uh, principles that we have in the scripture. So please take your time to read the word of God and if you don't have a Bible, you can please um, send us and maybe an email using the an email address on the last screen of the discussion, or you can give us a call, and by the grace of God, we ensure that we will send you a Bible. And so I pray that the good Lord will continue to strengthen you and to uphold us all onto that perfect day in Jesus' name. Amen. So finally, as we close today, we just want to um, pray this prayer. Let's say, Father, I dearly Father, please give us the grace to adhere to the advice in this chapter. In the name of your Father, Lord, we are talk we are we have you know, seen some of these important um, verses we have in this chapter. We pray in the name of Jesus, the grace to adhere to the instructions given to us here. We pray grant unto us in Jesus' name. Father of our own, we can do nothing. So we pray that give us the strength and the grace to be all that you want us to be. 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you because of answered our prayers. And we pray that even as we go into the rest of the month, the rest of the year, that you keep us all, keep us all, strengthen us, and uphold us all to that perfect day. In Jesus' name. Thank you, King of Glory. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. So we appreciate God for giving us the grace again and um, to be able to meet again at this point of Sick Ambassadors. We want to thank you for your time. Um, we want to believe that you have been blessed by um, the promises, the advice, the instructions, and we have um, uh, and the advice we have in this um, book of Philippians chapter 4. And in this chapter, that in Philippians chapter 4, I want to encourage us all to please take our time to meditate on these verses. And the good Lord will come to bless us all in Jesus' name. And so if you are yet to subscribe to our channel, I want to encourage you to please do so, so that together we can continue to grow as second coming of Christ ambassador. So thank you so much for joining us this um, Sunday evening. And we pray that the good Lord will give us the grace and to meet again next Sunday if a tithe is coming in Jesus' name. So on this note, we wish us all a wonderful week and a blessed evening. God bless you.